one. <laughs> so, all right. So I manufactured a good countdown there, guys, and we went live at one. <laughs> so I'm super excited to have you here with, be here with Ken Barr Jr., who is another speaker for Mindset Day at the ZigZag Virtual Summit. So I met you, Ken, a couple years ago. I guess it was like almost two years now. Was oh, it yeah. May of 2019? Yes, it was. Okay, so I met Ken two years ago, and even though we've actually only those two weeks, when I went to Michigan, I went to see him, and it's kind of crazy because we actually haven't talked too much, but you've definitely held a spot in my memory <laughs> so, where I instantly thought of you whenever we went to ZigZag Virtual. I was like, Ken needs to talk. Your, like, your enthusiasm is so, you know, it just like, I can't get words right right now, so, <laughs> but it just like, you know, spills out to everybody else. And I just loved it. And which is why I instantly was like, Ken has to talk because people are going to be excited. He's going to make people excited if they're not yet excited <laughs> to hear them you're, talk. You're getting me excited. Like right now, I was going to try to like, you know, mute the enthusiasm a bit. But now <laughs> I feel like you're the coach. And you're like, hey, we're going to go out and we're going to get people fired up and yeah. learn. And I'm like, just ready. I'm about to flip this table. Do it. Like, Wu is in your top five. So Ken is strengths as well. Um, he'll be here talking about strengths and what its input and Wu are in your top five. I don't know your other top three. Well, but I'm already impressed that you recalled two. So I know two. <laughs> top five strengths. Input, maximizer, arranger, Wu, and learner. There we go. So Ken, tell everybody more about you. Um, so I don't mess up the words any more than I already have. <laughs> Okay, I'm Ken Barr Jr. My friends call me KBJ, and I am a Gallup certified strengths coach and a licensed professional counselor. And my mission is to help individuals and teams discover, develop, and apply their strengths in order to maximize pretty much whatever they want to do. So that whether it's a personal goal, professional goal, my aim is to help you see what you do well and productively aim your strengths at that goal. Yeah. And I wouldn't say that's the only thing you do. Cause I remember when I interviewed you for zigzag virtual, <laughs> the, you know, make sure he wanted to be here. He was actually, it was in the middle of the pandemic, which we're still in, but right before Christmas as well. And so he was trying to raise money for a family in need as well. So I just love that you have that giving heart where you're always trying to help other people. And I still remember the story about the microwave that you told me when I came to Michigan, I was like, Oh, that's, so cool that you got this all from it's definitely generational or your whole family are your is your whole family like that i feel like it's a generation after generation of just vague giving yeah i definitely see that in uh, both sides of my family uh, just very caring they've been, i would say that there's a lot of relationship building strengths on both sides for both my mom and my dad have you and made them do the survey uh they had the opportunity yes yeah they yeah. wouldn't do it though yeah. No, they did. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have the woo if they didn't do it. If I couldn't okay. get them, but yeah, <laughs> both of my parents, no surprise at all, lead with positivity. Oh, okay. Positivity is in my top 10. It's number six for me. Okay. Positivity is in like the top half of mine, but I was okay. super disappointed that it was not in my top 10. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is the opposite of why it's not in my top 10, because I was so disappointed yeah. that it wasn't. Maybe your input, though. Maybe your input oh. has a like a positive hue to it. Like you're mm -hmm. collecting more positive things. Yeah. I'm input is in my top five. And I remember coming to, because I was in group coaching with him and Anna. So Anna is speaking as well on Mindset Day with about strengths, but different sides of it they're going to be speaking on. It. But I remember coming to them and being like, your top is input, like, isn't that a bad thing? Because um, <laughs> my dad collects stuff <laughs> a lot. And so I was like, oh my God, if I have input, I'm probably gonna end up being a hoarder in my life. <laughs> and so I remember coming to Ken and going, okay, tell me the positive sides of input. Yeah. Because right now I'm scared as hell that <laughs> input's in my top five. So yeah. It's it's a good reminder that every single person has these naturally recurring patterns of thought, feeling, and behavior. And in this instance, when we're describing input, that the behavior can be to collect things. That mm -hmm. thing could be something physical, like a notebook, an old pen, or it could be collecting information, 
via uh, web pages or, or books. But the point being is that you know that because you do it naturally, you have to be intentional to make sure that its application is productive. So if you're collecting so many books that you don't have a place to sit in your living room, then that invites a conversation about perhaps we can either organize the books in a better way or maybe not collect so many. Yeah. Well, I think we would need the arranger side of that <laughs> as well, which you have. Yeah, okay. um, but let's talk about what you're going to be talking about. So sure. I know I mentioned, you know, Anna is also talking on strengths, but you're going to be coming at this from a different side. And so that is why I really wanted both of you here because you both have different, like you don't share the same top five, which makes your personalities completely different and bringing a different side of strengths, which I think strengths is good for everyone. Everyone needs, I like strengths more than all the other personality surveys. Thanks to you too. Um, but tell us about the strength side of it that you're going to be teaching sure. Um, sure. in two weeks. Sure. So first of all, what we're referencing is a, an assessment that's called the Clifton Strengths Assessment. It used to be known as Strengths Finder, and it is an intrapersonal development tool. And its design is to help an individual discover those natural thought, feeling, and behavior patterns and find productive ways to, to focus those strengths on their goals to make, to make the good life. And it is wildly popular. This tipped, I'm going to say now, probably about seven years ago. And uh, StrengthsFinder 2.0, written by Tom Rath, has been, it was a New York Times bestseller and it was an Amazon bestseller for basically a decade, 10 years in a row. And it's become so popular. That's the one. Good that's your book. <laughs> yeah. It's a fan base. There you go. Yeah, it's, it's become so popular, the assessment that people are using it, not only in the world of work, but we are seeing it in schools. We are seeing it in churches pretty much any place that you have a team and people want to know more about what they do well, and they want to learn more about what their colleagues do well. Mm -hmm. This tool provides a language that describes the natural things that you do really well. Yeah. And I think this is, so when we talked a couple of weeks ago, I brought up how I made my husband take strengths assessment. And so you're going to hear from him how to use it with in business and employees, but truly understand that you're going to be able to use this in any relationship that you have. And so when I took it, I made my husband take it. <laughs> so I don't have loose. <laughs> I wasn't as, you know, convincing. I was just like, hey, do it because um, you're my husband. <laughs> so, and after he took it, because I'm a so achiever, so I know activator, activator. I was like, because anytime I ask him to do something, it doesn't get done right away. And it drives me insane. I'm like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's do this. And no, it doesn't happen. So I was like, you have to take this to prove that you have no activation in you. <laughs> and that was why I made him take it. But that realization really helped um, just because he doesn't activate or, yeah. you know, yeah. escaped his it, list completely, I think. <laughs> it does not. It, and in fact, we hear so frequently from couples that say, now I understand why she does things the way she does. Mm -hmm. Now I understand why he asks questions before he begins. Whereas somebody with high activator is like, let's just begin. Let's start. Yeah. Let's do this. And <laughs> they can say like the one of the very best outcomes from learning the strengths language is to understand that these are things that I naturally am going to do really well. But there shouldn't be the expectation that somebody else is wired the same way as you. Yeah. And then I think it really helps, like, because even just right now talking, like, my input is in the top five. And whenever I, like, I remember stuff, like, really good. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. when my employees, I'm like, I told you this three times already. Like, I'll, you know, start to get that frustration of why do I have to keep telling you? Mm -hmm. But then, like, you have that realization where you back up and you go, oh, that's not their strength. That, yeah. Yeah. Like, like my strength is remembering every single little detail, which is very beneficial, but it's not everybody's. So yeah, I, yeah. And it is, it can cultivate a sense of empathy. Like there's a part where all of a sudden 
it's like for you to know, like, yeah, for me, I easily sponge up information. I remember it. I'm pretty much reading everything I can get my hands on, but not everybody has that. And so it would be a mistake if you expect them to engage with information the same way that you do. You're mm -hmm. basically setting yourself up for disappointment. Oh yeah. And I'm so glad you mentioned empathy because empathy is so low on my, <laughs> in my things. <laughs> and I knew it would be because it's just not my thing, but it's neat to see how understanding other people's strengths can give you that, that bit of empathy that you might be missing from me. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, would, I would say the biggest benefit is it creates an understanding of what your, whoever's on your team, what they do well. Mm -hmm. You start to understand their motivations for why they do things the way that they do. Yeah, definitely. So I, I know we were going to talk about examples of how strengths plays out in business, but I know we definitely just did multiple times. <laughs> it just went it's like a coaching session, Ken, what happened? <laughs> it's supposed yeah, to be right. live. <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh, Ken will be live on March 2nd at 1115 AM first day during mindset to really dive deep into how you can apply strengths into your business with your employer relationship, with your partner relationships, all those different sides. He's going to give you the big overview of how it's going to work because it's only 30 minutes. So he cannot share, like we've already been here for 11. So, <laughs> um, he won't be able to share everything. So make sure you come show up live, ask your questions. Cause I know that you are planning to have some Q and a sections in there. And so get some of your questions answered, get ready, start looking at like, you know, these different aspects of strengths and how they could be playing a role in your business. And, you know, if you really want to do homework ahead of time, go get your assessment, even just your top five, like go to your top five and that'll help when you come to the class. It is not required though. So do not feel mandated to go do it, but can tell us more about what you do and how people can talk, contact you to get help with strengths or other things in life. Sure. So there are three major areas that I help people with on an individual level. I help people who are interested in discovering what their strengths are. And most people are looking for an affirmation, like basically like, Hey, I, I've been working for a bit. I know some of the things that energize me. I may be thinking about a career change or I may have be experiencing some burnout or you're just considering. There's an idea in your mind. I'm thinking I, I like what I do, but I keep getting thoughts of something else. Mm -hmm. And my background is in career counseling. And so one of the biggest things that I help individuals with is the discernment of if you're considering a career switch, what strengths would you be able to leverage in that new role? With the goal being that you know that you will be engaged in that position if you get a chance to use your strengths every day. But for many people, if you just ask them straight up, like, hey, what, what are five things that you can contribute to any team with ease, excellence, and enjoyment? And people were like, mm, uh, uh, let me think about that. <laughs> and on the flip side of that, but if you ask them, hey, what, what are five things that people say are your weaknesses? Or what are five things that you think those like just come off top of mind? Like, oh yeah, I'm definitely need help with time management and I definitely am not empathetic. And what I do is help people understand that you get more satisfaction and you get more productivity from the areas that you are talented in. Mm -hmm. And my goal is to help you see here are where your gifts are and try to be more intentional to stay in that space more. If you're staying at a spot where you're constantly working on what you're weak in, then you're likely to feel less confidence. And you're also not likely to get the results that you would if you focus on those areas where you're strong. Yeah, definitely. And how can they reach you? You can uh, email me at kenbarjr at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. But also, I mean, folks, it's, this is the age of information. I mean, you can tweet at me. You can send me a message on LinkedIn. It's all there. It's all Ken Bar Jr. Yeah, I was going to say, he's Ken Bar Jr. everywhere. Uh, so make sure. So especially like you're talking about like the career visioning and how, you know, 
pulling your strengths into that. So if you are struggling in the career you're in, you know, this summit is about leadership and growing your business. And so if you're having a problem right now and you can't identify those five things, reach out to Ken. Like, don't wait until March, even though it's only two weeks away. Uh, reach out to him now, and you can definitely talk to him to get a head start on that. And then if you haven't yet, get your ticket. I was like, I was trying to, like, move my hands to figure out which way I need to do this because I always mess it up. So there it is. over there, just down. There you go. I'm just going to do down. <laughs> He's much better at this. <laughs> so make sure you get your free <laughs> ticket to ZigZag Virtual, and then you can come see Ken live March 2nd at 1115 a.m., to really understand how yeah. things are going to play a role. Yeah. Ooh, you're listening to us live. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I just got an update that we are live. We are live. Yeah, and we're about to be unlive. So. <laughs> um, but make sure you get your ticket at Zigzag Virtual. See Ken live. Learn about strengths. Reach out to him personally, Ken Bar Junior. at at Gmail dot com. Um, two R's in Bar. Just make sure you do that, and then. Find him anywhere on social media and he will help you with strengths and help you identify where you can succeed. Stop looking at it as, you know, what's the worst that can happen. Start looking at what the best can happen is by using your strengths. So anything else you want to leave us with, Ken, before we go off? I think that what you have put together is going to be so beneficial because you've you've effectively grabbed from your network the people that you know. <laughs> They kind of like, this is the best, best I've curated. It's like yeah. these things we know will help your business multiply. These are the things that are going to help you be successful. So I, I had a client who talked about how she had tripled her revenue in a year, in less than a year's time. And part of that was just focusing on the things that she got the most juice from. Mm -hmm. And in the team context, like you have to understand what strengths that everybody brings to your unit. Because if you do that, you'll be more efficient and you can have this more strategic alignment. These are the job responsibilities and these are the strengths and the people that we're going to point at it. Yeah. No, and I, I, it, it'll, it'll all make sense when yeah. you come to the, the zigzag conference. <laughs> yes. Come to zigzag. I'm excited to watch everyone speak. Uh, so I'm super excited. I'm going to be here all day just watching and taking notes on everything. So if you haven't got your ticket, do it now. And then we will see you in a couple weeks. I'll see you tomorrow with another speaker. But everybody else will see you next two weeks from now. So, all right. Anna, you thank later. you. Yeah. Great so, to see you. Stay warm. You.